Okay, more comparisons of materials. We have a 500 gram iron pot and a copper pot and an aluminum pot, each with water in them, and we're heating them all up. And the question is, which one will stay warm the longest? Well, how much energy does each of them have when it's heated up? Before we get into any of this, let's warm up, haha, by figuring out how much energy is in the water, because of course you have to heat that up in all of these cases. The energy required to heat something is mc delta t, and we have a mass of, well, they didn't give us a mass, did they? They said 250 milliliters, but because metric is awesome, 250 milliliters of water is 250 grams of water. The specific heat for water is, say it with me, 4.19. And the temperature change... Uh, they don't say the initial temperature, do they? Well, these are identical in every other way. Let's say they start at 20 because that's room temperature and that's what the temperature that most water and pots are before we start doing things to them. So going from 20 degrees up to 100 degrees would be an 80 degree delta T. And that gives us how much energy? 250 times 4.19 times 80 degrees, 83,800 joules, or 83.8 kilojoules. So in all of these cases, we're spending 83.8 kilojoules just heating up the water. 83.8 kJ. No matter what kind of pot you're using, you are spending this much energy to heat the water inside it. Now, when you heat a pot full of water, the pot heats up also. The water is touching it, they're in contact, they're going to remain at thermal equilibrium, which means they pretty much have to stay at the same temperature, give or take a degree or two, and eventually those temperatures will sink up. So 100 degree water will inevitably heat its container to 100 degrees as well. So how much energy are we talking about to heat an iron pot and a copper pot and an aluminum pot? Let's find out. Our trusty formula can do these for us. For iron, energy equals mc delta t. Uh, they said it's a 500 gram pot. The specific heat for iron, is it here? 0 0.449. 0 0.449. And our temperature change is 80. I'm saying we started at room temperature 20 degrees and we're going up to 100 degrees. So there's our energy. Now I'm not going to finish that and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm going to set up the other two and then we'll see if maybe we can shortcut this a little bit. For copper, same formula applies. Our mass is 500 again. The specific heat for copper is, is it here? 0 0.385 0 0.385 temperature change is 80 and finally we have our aluminum pot where MC delta T will be 500 the specific heat for aluminum is 0 0.897 And the temperature changes 80 again. Now, do you see that maybe we don't need to multiply all these out to decide what the winner is going to be? All of these have a 500 in them, so that's kind of a wash. That's going to be... A, that's the same for everybody, so it's not going to make any difference. And the temperature changes were all 80, so that's not going to make any difference either. In this problem, the energy is basically just going to be proportional to whatever the specific heat is, which means the copper pot will hold the least energy and will cool down the fastest.
the iron pot will be the second highest, and the aluminum pot with the highest specific heat is the one that will hold the most energy and thus theoretically keep water warm the longest. So with the numbers they've given us, it should be the aluminum container. Now, leaving the problem behind for a moment, you might be thinking, well, I don't have a lot of aluminum cookware except maybe in my camping set, but you definitely see iron pots and you definitely see copper pots also, so what's going on here? Well, it's weird that they said 500 grams for every one of these containers. Aluminum is very light its density is low, which means a pot that can hold a given amount of water is not going to be 500 grams if it's made out of aluminum. It's going to be lighter because aluminum is a lighter metal. If you have a big cast iron pot that can hold a certain amount, its mass is going to be much higher because the walls are very thick. They tend to be, cast iron tends to be, have heavier walls, and so you'd have a higher mass here. It's cheating a little bit for them to say that all these masses are the same. That's unrealistic, and so if these numbers make it sound like all of our cookware should be aluminum and we should never use copper when in fact pretty much the opposite is true in a, in a kitchen. It's because these numbers are not really tracking with the way the way that cooking containers are really made. So if that was bugging you, I think that would be the reason why. And if you got the MC Delta T part of this, then you are doing great and we will see you in lesson 1.2.